Here are 12 ways spec scans can help. One, spec scans help doctors ask better questions. Dr. Harold Burstein uh, from Harvard, he was the co-founder of the psychiatry and law program at Harvard, says that spec scans do not give you the answer. They teach you to ask better questions. The results from a scan do not give you a diagnosis per se. They are involved in the investigation of a problem. For example, if a brain injury pattern is seen, but someone didn't tell us about it, it causes us to ask more targeted questions about a brain injury. Or if we see a toxic pattern, uh, it tells us we need to go explore whether or not you've had any toxicity. So it's just a really helpful test to give you better information. Two, SPECT has the potential to give doctors more complete information and not miss important things. Without imaging information, clinicians may miss very important pieces of information, such as whether or not you had a brain injury, or whether or not you've had toxic exposure, or you're vulnerable to early dementia, or you have potential seizure activity. Scans also show if there's too much activity or there's too little activity. One of my favorite cases is of a couple who failed marital therapy. They went for three years, spent $20,000, uh, and at the end, the therapist told them to get divorced, and that made the couple very unhappy. And so they got mad at the therapist, and the therapist said, well, I know this doctor in Newport Beach who takes care of really difficult people. And so um, she sent them to see me, and what we found, the husband's brain looked totally toxic, even though he didn't drink and he never used drugs. What was happening is he was working in a furniture factory, being exposed to the chemicals uh, there, and it was completely damaging his brain. Um, even though he came for a behavioral reason, uh, he came because he's having marital problems, it was totally a brain problem where he was being poisoned at work, and without the information, they would have never known, and the information led us to more specific targeted treatment to help him. Three, spec scans have the potential to prevent mistakes. More information, getting information on someone's brain, helps doctors uh, not prescribe the wrong treatments, such as unnecessarily stimulating a brain that's already overactive or calming a brain that tends to be underactive. Let me give you a, a case study example. One of my friend's wife went to the family doctor because she was having problems with depression. And in a seven-minute appointment, the doctor put her on uh, an antidepressant. Uh, within three days, she felt much better. Within a week, she was feeling great. Uh, the, the next week, she was at a stop sign, and a guy in a pickup truck pulled up next to her, and he winked at her, which was not unusual because my friend's wife was beautiful. Uh, but what happened next was very unusual. She unbuttoned her blouse and showed the man her breasts. And uh, my friend was a pastor. It was a very bad thing. Uh, horrified by her own behavior, uh, she came to see me. And what we found is she had the type of depression where she had overall low activity in the front part of her brain. By putting her on this specific antidepressant, which lowers activity in the brain, he was in fact making her worse, making her more impulsive. I have another patient who saw six doctors in the San Francisco Bay Area because she thought she had ADD and was put on six different stimulant medications. Uh, didn't get better on any of them. She then read my book, Healing ADD, and came to our clinics, and what we found was she had a cerebellar tumor, a tumor in her cerebellum the size of a lemon. Um, stimulants don't help tumors. Uh, it's, it's, it's really insane, if you think about it, to be treating most psychiatric disorders without looking. I've had kids, you know, one kid in particular who was in a drug treatment program who was in a residential treatment program, who had problems with violence, and nothing worked. And he had tried medicine after medicine, and when we scanned him, we found he had a cyst 
in the left front side of his brain that was the size of a tennis ball. I mean, it's like, how awful? He's never going to get better until his brain was better. The fourth way spec scans have the potential to help is they actually give us a direct look at your brain. So we can see the front part of your brain. Uh, we can see your temporal lobes. We can see deep structures in the brain. And again, we can see, are they working well? Are they underactive or are they overactive? One of the criticisms of my work with brain spec imaging is that most spec patterns do not have a signature pattern for each psychiatric illness. So, for example, ADD does not look the same on spec for everyone, or depression does not look the same on a spec scan for everyone. But you know, that is precisely the reason to order scans in individual patients. It's useful to know in your situation how your specific brain works so we can target treatment, not to a big diagnostic category like depression, but well, what does your brain look like? Does your brain work too hard? Does your brain not work hard enough? So, um, you know, I've described six different types of ADD seven different types of anxiety and depression, and five different types of obesity. Giving everyone the same treatment for these illnesses is really quite crazy and invites failure and frustration for, for literally hundreds of thousands of people around our country.